Hello, welcome to a dental review. Today I'm going to show the anatomical landmark of maxillary edentulous foundation. So basically there are different areas uh, that are some are called supporting areas and some are called limiting areas and some are relief areas. So basically we start with the limiting areas. So these are the areas that helps to identify up to where our denture can be extended. There are many structures that act as a limiting area. So first is a labile frenum. This black spot you see here, it's a labile frenum. Then it's a labial vestibule, this blue structure. It's a labial vestibule that act as a limiting area. Then another one is a buccal frenum. Buccal from this two are structure are the buccal frenum. It also act as a mm, limiting area. Then we can not extend our denture up from this area. Up to here we could extend. From beyond this we cannot extend. And the next one is the buccal vestibule. This green structure you see right? Right? The green structure are buccal vestibule. Mm, and another one is hamular knots. This red spot, not the pink one. But the red spot, it's a hamular knot and it also acts as a limiting area. We can extend our denture up to this area. And the last one is the posterior palatal seal. This is the blue structure that acts as a limiting structure. We cannot extend up our denture up from beyond these areas. Up to here we can extend. Similarly, same thing happens here. And so these are uh, the limiting structure. Alright, now let's go for the supporting structure okay these are the structure that helps to support the denture basically they prevent the this, uh, movement of this denture so the primarily there are two supporting structure two types of they are primarily and secondarily so they are also known as uh, stress bearing areas so the primary stress bearing areas are um, hard palate this all gray structure you see here right these are hard palate it is the main structure that act as a primary stress bearing areas and the another one is posterior lateral slope of residual alveolar ridge these are the posterior part right these are the residual alveolar ridge that are present after the removal of tooth and this is a posterior lateral slopes slopes that act as a primary stress bearing areas Posterior slope of residual alveolar is act as a secondary stress bearing areas, and the these are the primary stress bearing areas. Now secondary stress bearing areas are mm, rugae. You see here yellow structure. These all are rugae. It act as a secondary stress bearing areas, and and uh, you see this pink structure. It's a ma called maxillary tuberosity. It also act as a secondary stress bearing areas. Mm. Now the another area is relief area. This area are the area that need to be relief because this area contain important structure that may be blood or by blood or nerves or they may be they may be covered with thin membrane so they could be easily damaged by the denture. So the relief structure are the first one is incisive papilla, this green structure you see here, right? It is a limiting structure this area need to be relieved because um, if it is not relieved then it may cause a burning sensation of the upper lips it could be easily traumatized and it may cause a burning sensation of the upper lip so this structure should be relieved and the another one is this red structure it's called mid palatine raffae this area also need to be relieved because uh, this area contain thin membrane that is it doesn't contain submucous only mucous membrane below it there's no submucosa so it could be easily traumatized by the denture so this area need to be relief and another one is um, labial frenum this structure this uh, structure is also need to be relieved because it could be easily traumatized so this structure need to be relief and the, the another one is buccal frenum these are the buccal frenum so so this re, this area also need to be relieved because it contain some muscles 
I mean some muscle get attached in here there mm, I call it love LOV levator angli oris and orbicularis oris and buccinator LOB it's kind of easy for me and the other another one is torus palatinus uh, it's a bony elevation uh, occur on the mouth and it need to be really because it also contain thin mucous membrane so it could be traumatized and probable to damage so these are the relief structure okay the uh, other structure are palatina fovea so he is a palatina fovea this it's not mentioned here but this structure it's a fovea palatina usually it's a fovea that's a hole and it's a so fovea present probably on the soft palate and another one is anterior vibrating line it's a imaginary line that is located at the junction of attached tissue of hard palate and the adjacent soft palate so it must be here and this structure is cupid bow shape that is bow shape you know that what right so it's cupid bow shape due to posterior nasal spine so other and another one is posterior vibrating it is just lies posteriorly that is posterior vibrating line so these are the structure present in the uh, edentulous maxillary foundation